So Apple releases M1 and everyone is wowed by the performance, but almost immediately folks were talking about M1X or M2. And in fact, there seems to be quite a number of people waiting for these new chips to drop before they purchase a new Apple computer. So should you wait? Do you need more than M1? Uh, let's tackle that first question. Should you wait for upgraded Apple Silicon before buying a new Apple computer? I think there are some clear scenarios where it makes sense to hang on. Let's cover five of those. Uh, the first one is form factor. If you want a 16-inch laptop or a larger iMac, then there aren't any options available at the moment with M1, so it's pretty reasonable that you'll need to wait for those form factors to be released. The second point is GPU performance. The M1's graphics are really impressive, but if you've got a GPU-dependent workload, then you might find that the performance isn't sufficient. For example, I've shown in previous videos how the M1 doesn't do so well with video editing in DaVinci Resolve with Blackmagic RAW, and that's something that I do regularly. The M1 can do it, but there are computers with stronger GPUs that make more sense for that workload. And maybe you like to do some gaming. Uh, yes, some Mac users do in fact game, and there's a decent selection of games available on platforms like Steam. Now, I personally prefer to have a Windows gaming machine, but not everyone has the luxury of having two computers. So if you want one machine to do it all, and you want to do some gaming with more graphically intensive titles, you might want a more powerful GPU. A third reason why you might want to wait is if uh, you're dependent on external USB storage, because as I've shown in previous videos, the M1's USB performance is not what it should be. And linked to that is a fourth reason, ports. If you want a smaller laptop, but you need more than two ports, there isn't an option available at the moment. And finally, my fifth reason is if you don't want to be a first generation adopter of Apple Silicon. Many people, especially professionals, prefer to wait for new technology to mature a little. Uh, but that said, I think the M1 has proven itself in most areas now. Uh, so there's my list of five reasons why you might want to wait for the next crop of Apple Silicon. Uh, something I didn't include in that list, of course, is the argument of having more RAM. But bear in mind who these current computers are targeted at. And I've done a whole bunch of testing with the M1 16 gigabyte version, and it covers the majority of workloads really well. I don't think it would improve much with more RAM. But if you do have a workload that depends on 32 gigs or more, then obviously you'd need to wait. Uh, I also don't necessarily agree with waiting on the basis of some rumored new technology that may or may not materialize in these new models. But at the end of the day, it's your money and your choice how you spend it. Uh, just be careful to avoid the paranoia that something better will come along, because guess what? There's always something better just around the corner. I find it better to buy something that meets your needs right now and for the period that you think you'll own the machine. And don't worry about other people having something newer and better or something better coming along in the future, because there will come a point where it's time for you to upgrade again. And at that point, you'll get something new and better. So let's come back to that second question. Do you need more than M1? Let's start with CPU performance, particularly single core performance, because the M1 in this respect is fantastic. The top of the range Intel 11th gen i9 CPUs are now a bit quicker, but the M1 beats out the majority of x86 CPUs, and it's faster than any Intel Mac by a comfortable margin for those single threaded tasks. It's genuinely fast, and that speed reveals itself in daily usage. Apps open instantly, the system is snappy, and I think most M1 users would probably agree that it's the snappiest computer they've ever used for their day-to-day -day computing tasks. But what about multi-threaded workloads? Well, the M1 is no slouch here either, offering more performance than the top-of-the-range i9-equipped 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, even though we've seen some significant progress from AMD and Intel in their laptop CPUs, the M1 still beats the majority of them, and it does so using much less power. And that means less fan noise and longer battery life. Considering the cost of a basic MacBook Air, and you can get these at a decent discount from the Apple Store on Amazon, uh, links in the description if you want to check that out. Um, but there is no other computer offering this level of performance at this price point. And the simple truth is that the vast majority of users will never be able to utilize all the performance that the M1 has to offer. The 8 gig model is perfect for everyday computing, and the 16 gig model would suit a large number of more demanding workflows. Now, yes, you can find the limitations of that M1 chip. It's not some magical piece of computing wizardry. And there are things that x86 chips do better. But overall, 
it's got more than enough performance for most people. More than enough performance for many of the people who are actually waiting for the M1X or M2 to come along, thinking that they need something more. And the truth is, you probably don't especially if you're buying a laptop or a small iMac, because the M1 is already faster than anything that came before. So if you need a computer now, don't discount the M1 on the basis that there will be a faster chip coming later. Uh, truth is, unless you've got a specific workload that needs more performance, you very likely would never notice the difference. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. I always love chatting with you guys about these things. Uh, and I'm very grateful for all of your likes, your shares, and subscriptions. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.